I'm Dr. Jessie Poon, Medical Director at Mount Elizabeth Fertility Centre. I'll be your guide on the topic of understanding more about IVF together with our IVF clinician, Dr. Anu Priya. Hi Jessie, I'm Dr. Anu Priya. My day-to-day -day work involves uh, supporting patients in their fertility journeys as an obstetrician and gynaecologist. So Anu, can you walk us through the IVF process? Sure. Uh, IVF means in vitro fertilization. In vitro means outside the body. Fertilization is the meeting of the egg and the sperm. In IVF, a woman has to undergo ovarian stimulation during which multiple injections are given over a 10-day period to help the woman produce multiple eggs. These eggs are then extracted through the vagina under anesthesia and then they are cultured in the laboratory, fertilized with the sperm and cultured for another five days or so, at which point they should become blastocysts. These can then be transferred into the woman as a fresh transfer or they can be frozen and used at a later date. So the most critical part of IVF uh, is ovarian stimulation because ovarian stimulation gives us the number of eggs that we need and eggs are the starting point of IVF. The more the number of good quality eggs, the better the chance of success, the more embryos we have. We may have surplus embryos and these surplus embryos can be used for subsequent embryo transfers without her needing to go for a stimulation all over again. So what is the number one concern among your patients and how do you help them overcome this? There are two main issues that women are worried about. Number one is the fact that it is injections um, and injections are obviously painful. And the number two concern is about the impact of these very high dose hormones. So for the first one, I reassure them, the IVF injections are delivered by a pen and a very, very fine, very small needle. And for the hormones, um, several studies have been conducted over the world which have shown that once the period comes, all the high dose hormones that she has been subjected to, they are flushed out of the body. So presenting this data from long-standing studies reassures women it is safe to go for IVF. So Anu, what makes a patient suitable for IVF? So IVF is actually a big boon for couples who have infertility. Certain couples have no other way to conceive. Uh, for example, women who have uh, both the fallopian tubes blocked or men who have very severe uh, semen abnormalities. So Anu, what is the success rate of IVF in general? The most important determinant is the woman's age. So younger patients will have a much higher success rate, maybe 60 to 70 percent per embryo transfer. Older women, especially those beyond 40, will have a much lower success rate. Average success rate is about 30, 35 percent. Well, we always, always aim for success in the first cycle. However, most women will require more than one cycle. And that's where surplus embryos come handy because then you don't have to go through the entire process again. Conditions uh, such as endometriosis or severe semen abnormalities, even in some patients with severe polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCO, that can also reduce the success rate of IVF cycles. So how does one enhance their egg or sperm quality? Now, um, to have good quality eggs or sperm, both partners should not be smoking for at least three months before the IVF process. They should be as close as possible to their ideal body weight. They should eat a healthy diet, lots of vegetables, fruit, not a lot of junk food or carbohydrates. And they should take supplements that aid fertility. 